So I want to do something a little bit different today. I want to take you behind the scenes of one of my most recent songs and show you some of the approaches that you can take when it comes to songwriting and the thought processes that you, processes that you can go through and how you can make decisions when it comes to your own music as well. And, you know, it's not something that I would typically want to do on this channel because, uh, you know, I don't want to make this channel about my music because, you know, it's not. It's about yours and it's about your songwriting and everything. But very often, you know, one of the best things you can do is, uh, you know, give examples. And, you know, obviously, obviously me being a songwriter myself, um, really the best way I can do it is to show you some of the ways that I approach songwriting. And, you know, something I always try to stress on this channel, it's not, of course, the only way you can do it. I have a, a particular kind of approach that I like to take. And, you know, it's it's for you to, you know, use of it what you will, essentially. And if you would like to give the song a listen before we actually dive in to the session that I have here, um, I'll leave the Spotify and Apple link down below in the description if you want to just give it a quick listen, just to know what it is that I'm talking about. Of course, you're going to hear pieces of it throughout the video as well. Um, but just one last thing before I get started, I have recently written an ebook called The Seven Steps to Writing Your Next Killer Song. And this is essentially a step-by-step -step checklist and um, you know approach that you can take to writing your next song, even if you are, com are a complete beginner and you've never written a song before. So... I'm going to leave the link to that ebook in the description below. It's completely free. Just click the link. It'll take you to the landing page and you can, you know, type in your email address and it'll get sent straight to you. Uh, but apart from that, I will um, pretty much leave that as the intro and I'll dive straight in to the video. <laughs> so the song I'm going to be talking about here in this session is called Loose Ends. And it's kind of like an indie kind of pop track, I guess. Um, it's quite kind of like a, a kind of like cruising, like slow burn track. It's not like a really like, you know, fast, upbeat one. Um, but yeah, I'll just give you um, an idea of like how the song actually started. So um, basically it kicked off with uh, pretty much like a riff that I just had, like an idea for... Um, a riff and when I originally came up with it it wasn't a different key to what this what this finished song is so the whole song is in the key of a major um, that that's what the finished song is in but it actually starts off on the on the key of f sharp essentially so it's in the key of a major but it, it starts off on an f sharp chord is f sharp minor chord is what I mean so that's going to be the sixth chord of of the um, harmonized scale you know, it's a very uh, like typical songwriting technique to start off on a different chord to what the uh, what the actual home chord is going to be. Um, so this is basically how the riff goes, just to give you an idea. <laughs> That is pretty much just playing around with the uh, kind of like the arpeggio notes, essentially. Um, so, you know, it's, it's playing around with the chord notes is what I mean by that. So it starts off straight on the note F sharp, and then it goes down to the minor third, and then it goes to an E, an E major chord. I'm actually just playing the first and the fifth, so it's just basically the, the power chord. And then it goes to a D major. The, the first and the fifth of that as well there but the most distinctive thing about that riff is really the rhythm I suppose um, you know it's it's not like a particularly like complex riff like in, in terms of like how it's actually been put together like note for note but but the rhythm it's got like kind of like a bit of a a, dis a distinctive flavour to it I guess and then uh, it's got that that kind of like little um, kind of like Bit, bit on the end, I guess, the little tail on the end that really I just heard in my head and, you know, it, it just kind of worked for the riff and for, you know, the, the rhythm that I was using, what I was going for there and everything. Um, but then I develop the, the riff a little bit um, the next time round because I am just using the same chords over and over again. So this time I do this. 
So I really, I really, really love these chords. Like this is basically suggesting a, a an F sharp minor seven chord there, which I absolutely love that sound. Um, you know, it gives it like a slightly little bit of a jazzy twang to it as well. And then I, the, the last time round before um, the song like really kicks in with like the, the drums and everything, um, I basically go up to the higher um, kind of like third notes. And I'm basically playing, you know, the, the standard uh, kind of like you know, bar chords, you know, from, from the fifth string on the guitar. And, you know, it's, it's just a, it's just a way of, if you're, if you're kind of like sticking with the same chord progression and, you know, you're, you're trying to come up with a riff like that, it's just a way of being able to hold that interest there because, you know, you, you, you don't always have to like be changing the chords per se in order to keep interest um you know there, there's loads of songs out there that you know pretty much keep the same chords the the whole way through the song but they still manage to keep interest in other ways and that's just kind of like what i you know the technique that i used there when it came to coming up with that riff you know i was i i liked the chord progression and i liked you know where it was going and what the melodies you know you know the melodies that it was suggesting and things like that um but to keep that interest in the in the riff in the riff itself um you know that that's basically uh what i was doing there and then kind of like the next step from there was the vocal melody which actually came to me quite quickly um for this one so basically it goes it goes something like this the, the actual vocal melody i am not as So, you know, that, that, that really just kind of like came to me, like, um, you know, pretty much straight, straight away, like just, just in my head, but, you know, breaking it, breaking down, like actually what's going on there, it's, it's really not complicated at all. So the melody starts off on the A note, which is the, uh, the minor third of the first chord, and then it travels down the scale and that's something that you know in in songs very much often suggests uh, something that's kind of sad you know a, a melody that travels down the scale rather than uh, up the scale is always going to have more of a, an emotional and a sad quality to it essentially so i'll just give you a little play of what that sounds like in the actual recording here so just put my headphones on i am not a it as you may perceive I will try and lose my memories as I remember my regrets forgetting yourself so that's basically the the kind of like the intro slash pretty much diving straight into the verse and the the kind of like the main melody so you know that that's that's just what i think suited the song um i i was th i was thinking like whilst i was writing it coming in with the what the chorus um was going to be uh like straight away but i wanted to leave kind of like a bit of a build up a bit of tension there rather than just diving straight into the chorus um it's a very modern way of writing writing songs like just diving straight into uh what the chorus is um you know there's you know so many songs in like you know pop pop music writing um takes that approach and you know it's it's a really powerful approach as well because you know you're you're basically driving straight into the main hook but i didn't feel like this was uh, you know that kind of song if that makes sense so with the next section of the song it's pretty much the same uh, harmony melody um almost the same lyrics as well but it just is developed by bringing in the you know some of the other instruments like the drums and the bass etc so i'll just play you a little bit of that i am not as tired as you may perceive i will try and lose my memories as i So 
So you can kind of hear that with the way I wrote the drum part for this as well. I, you know, I basically had it pretty much following the rhythm of the main guitar riff. And by doing that, that's really accentuating the, you know, that distinctive rhythm of that guitar riff. And I just found that that really worked. And I also have the bass guitar as well. Um, if I just solo that here, it's uh, basically doing the same thing. So that is a very important and distinctive part of the verse of that song. And it's really what the whole song is built on, like that, the the very strong beat and rhythms that are going on there is what is going to be kind of like the main kind of like hook and, you know, att attraction um, for, you know, a first time listener of the song, basically. So this is what is kind of like a typical thing with any song that you write you'll find that there is kind of like a center point that you're going to revolve around and it could be uh it could be anything it could be you know a drum beat it could be a riff it could be a lyric it could be um you know it could be a melody or something like that it could be a hook but you're going to find something in a song that you're writing that's going to draw a listener in and then you want to make that kind of like your focus because you can't have everything in your song being kind of like front and center in the spotlight you know there's, there's going to be things that kind of like you know come to the, the background and that can of, of course change like as the song progresses as well like different things are going to come to the forefront different things are going to uh you know play that part of holding the listener's attention and things like that but I found that the centre point for this song was that uh, very much that um, that beat and that rhythm, um, you know, that was kind of like introduced with the guitar riff, essentially. So there's a slight little change in the bridge part where it basically goes from the main chord progression. So it ends on a ends on a D chord and then it drops down to a C sharp minor. And then back up to the D. And that's what... Um, leads it onto the chorus and where it it hits strong because you're you're finally reaching um the what is the the home chord of the entire song which is the 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 a chord so that's what really helps kind of build that tension um you know very much in the the first sections of the song is that i'm not you know hitting straight in there with that main uh that main a chord you know i'm suggesting it with with the, with the other chords that i'm kind of playing around it but you know i'm not going straight in there i'm kind of like holding it back and then that's when it hits uh, you know much harder um when the chorus you know finally you know finally comes in essentially so as i said in the bridge section it drops down to a c sharp minor and then up to a d and then that ends up being a four a four to one as they call it um you know chord change so it's, it's it's that's what's bringing it back so it's not um the typical five to one which would be that it's doing a and that was just something that just worked for this song essentially you know i, I it, it didn't it didn't need that you know extra kind of like push up to the five because I just thought for this song it sounded a little bit cheesy, um, like adding that in. So I'll just give you a quick play of what that sounds like now. So there's all sorts of things that are kind of like being introduced in that part that, you know, really kind of signify that it's the chorus and, you know, 
really kind of accentuate it essentially. So of course the first thing I mentioned is that you you finally reach the home chord which is the A chord which is a really key part of that. Then there's of course the addition of other instruments as well. You know there's other guitar parts coming in. There's acoustic guitar parts. There's you know a couple of other electric guitar parts that you can see. So there's really all sorts of things going on there that make it you know have a bigger and more impactful sound and you know some some of it is production choice as well and it was decisions that i would have made uh whilst i was recording it as i was laying up the song um you know i was adding in like different parts seeing seeing what worked seeing what didn't and things like that but it's it's all part of the songwriting process as well like actually making those decisions deciding what instruments to use and and things like that and, and at what point so just to show you what the chord progression is actually doing so it goes from an a chord up to a c sharp minor and you know one of my favorite ways of playing chords especially on a guitar is to you know if if it's the right if it's the right key essentially i love to leave some of these open strings um so that's what i do with the a chord there so that's immediately suggesting um almost like a, an a major but with a sus2 in there uh, which is just a really gorgeous sound i think and then it goes down to an f sharp minor which uh, is also leaving those two high notes open and then up to a D major chord. Like so. You know, so it's it's nothing like, you know, revolutionary or anything. It's simply just a, a one to a three to a six to a four. Um, you know, in if you're talking about in harmonized scale terms, but that's essentially um, you know, what's going on there. And then there's just like some additional things that I'm doing. Um, you know, if we're if we're talking about the backing vocals here. So one of my one of my favorite parts is actually um what I did with the backing vocals here. So I'll just show you. <sighs> So there's something, um, you know, really kind of interesting going on with the melody there. And it's adding like a little bit of um, kind of like tension in there as well, which I which I really like. So the melody that's kind of on top of that is the third note of the A major. And then it goes down to this note. Which um, is actually the minor seven notes of um c c sharp minor seven essentially so it's very much suggesting that chord there just by adding that note into the backing vocal and as i mentioned before i love chords like that i love minor seven chords so that's very much why i made that decision and you know i, I made that decision whilst i was recording that that wasn't something that i had pre-written so I'll just point out one other little thing here, which is one of the lead guitars. So I'll just play you this part here. I'll just give you a little bit more context there as well. So that that riff is just so simple, but it's also very much an extra little rhythmic detail in there as well, just because of the way it's played. And, you know, for the most part, it's pretty much just using the uh, the chord notes. So, you know, in this case, it's, it's using a, a C sharp, which is the third note of the, um, the A major chord again. And then an E, which is the which is the fifth. And of course, C sharp is part of the um, C sharp minor chord, and also the F sharp. And then when it reaches the D, it goes up to the D note there, um, which 
you know, kind of resolves the whole thing essentially. So that's kind of like pretty much just how I approached it. But once again, it was it was one of those things that just kind of came to me whilst I was writing the song. So I'll just play you some of the second verse now. So the second verse pretty much returns to what the first verse was doing. But even though I wanted to keep, you know, some similarities in there, have it be pretty much the same chord progression, you know, you, you've got to add some differences in there as well to keep the listener's interest. So I'll just um, play you a little bit of that first, um, just to give you an idea of what's going on there. But baby, I gotta leave you, God damn it. We are not as tired it as you may perceive. I will try and lose my... So one of the things that kind of helps kind of distinguish this verse from the first verse is it does sound um you know a, a little bit more sparse than uh than than that verse it also helps coming out of the chorus as well because there are instruments that have been taken away there's no more um, acoustic guitar in the in the first part but also there's that uh, new guitar riff that comes in as well which is somewhere around here So a couple of things that make it interesting. I mean, it's it's playing a melody that hasn't been heard so far in the song. Um, you know, it's it's very simple. It's 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 pretty much just doing the uh, you know using the scale essentially that I have, um, and it's just running down the the chords in a slightly different way. So I'll just give you a quick play of it just to show you what it looks like. <laughs> does something slightly different the next time round. So also one of the most distinctive parts of that guitar sound is the use of that chorus effect as well. Um, I created that with my software that I have here. Um, so I'm at... <laughs> Just a little side note, I might do a review of this software at some point because it's absolutely incredible. It's the Scuffum Amps um, S-Gear software. Um, you know, it's it's just, uh, you know, probably the best amp simulator that I've probably ever come across. And uh, I created it through that. And, you know, it's, it just gives it like a, a nice, like, rich tone. And also something a little bit different as well to what's been heard so far in the song, and you know that's that's once again very much a a songwriting technique. Um, if you're writing a song like I have here, where you know you're building out the entire song, you're you're adding drums and bass and things like that. So adding new sounds to your instruments, you know, using different effects and things like that, is just another way of holding your listeners' attention and you know bring that extra development to you know, your song and the parts that you play and things like that. It's, it's, it's another technique uh, when it comes to songwriting, just to bear in mind as well. And it's also one of the most fun parts, I think. And also the producer engineer that I worked with who also helped me mix this song um, and he worked alongside me with it, he uh, added in some really cool, like nice little effects into this chorus as well, which I'll just give you a play off here. And it's, you know, it's really subtle stuff but it does add like some extra depth and richness to you know this next chorus you know and once again that's very much a production decision but it also plays into the actual song and it and its songwriting as well and you know and whilst it's not immediately noticeable in the final record recording i think you'd notice if it wasn't there if that makes sense because it does add some extra depth and some extra richness to that course and it's, and it's essentially just a, a pretty simple synth part essentially and then there's something that i do with the the main vocal melody um in the second half of the chorus which added adds some extra development as well so I'll just give you a play of that. Oh, 
So, you know, it's the same chords. It's exactly the same harmony um, going on. It's just that the uh, I'm just singing up um, in in like a, a higher range of notes, essentially. And, you know, it's, it's just, um, you know, adding some extra development there to um to the the song and and the chorus before um going into the the next section of the of the song so basically what happens is the song actually ends up modulating essentially which is where there is actually a complete key shift and it goes at, it goes to a key um that is pretty much completely out of context of um you know everything that the so the song has done up to this point but it does add um you know, some, something a bit different, a bit interesting in there and something to kind of like catch the listener's ear as well, which, you know, I personally think is quite an important part of songwriting. And, you know, it's really just a principle I think is to follow when it comes to songwriting as well. Like try to add in something that is, you know, a, a little bit different, something that's going to add, um, you know, something that is unexpected to the listener essentially and that's what this section does for this song and the, you know there's so many different ways that you can do that i might even do a complete separate video on it on how it is that you can um you know add in something unexpected or different or you know just just helping to keep the the listener interest and so i go from the the chorus chords <laughs> So, so it's in it's in the key of A, and then it goes down to a G minor, and then up to an A minor, So there are actually a couple of chords in there that are, you know, pretty much out of context with each other as well, um, because you know it's going from a G minor to an A minor to a C, which could potentially be suggesting, uh, you know, a, a G minor progression essentially. But then it goes down to an E major, which is adding in that G sharp note in there, which is very tense. But there's a nice little chromatic part in there that helps the listener's ear kind of like make that step um, because it's going from a C major because there's that G note in there and then it goes to an E major uh, which has got that, that uh, G sharp and then it goes up to the A with the D chord so that so that cr that chromatic line in there is really helping to you know that help that help the the chord progression and also the listener make that stepping stone even though you know it's it's touching on like some really quite unusual harmonies in there and then the the d chord just naturally draws it back to the original progression um which is what the outro ends up being so the original progression that starts on f sharp minor uh because that is that's what's happened um you know previously in the song where the chorus has ended on the D and then it goes straight back to so that's that's basically how that works and how that chord progression kind of like sits there and you know you may be wondering how did I you know end up like kind of like coming up with that um you know it's one of those things with with a with a song um you know any song that you write you can you can sit and break down, you know, all of the the theory behind it, and you know what what the harmony is doing and things like that. But at the end of the day, it was just one of those things that just ended up coming to me when I was trying to figure out what I should do with the song next. I was trying to come up with something that would, you know, add that distinctive flavour to the song, and pretty much it just started off with, you know, going from that D chord to that G minor. Hearing that and just thinking, okay, I kind of like that. I kind of like where that's going, and and then it just kind of like led on to the next chords, and then I started to hear the the melody in there as well, um, which which ended up basically turning into this, which I'll just give you a quick play of as well.
you know, and once again, as I think is typical with my style of songwriting, that melody is very much following the uh the third notes of the of the chords that I'm playing as well. So with the G minor there's the Just a C add nine chord. Very beautiful chord that. And you know, it pretty much just runs like that. So it's 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 pretty much just following the third notes there of those chords, the minor and the major chords. And you know, once again it's just expressing the emotion there of of the song you know i i love using the third notes of chords because they they i just think they just have so much power um to them so you know that's pretty much just where that came from and you know how i came up with that melody as well and then as i say it just pretty much just ends on the the same chord progression as before for the outro So that's pretty much the gist of the song. Like, you know, that I could, I could, you know, go on for ages, like talking about every single like little part to it. Um, you know, there's obviously like the extra guitar parts in there as well. There's there's loads of little things going on there, on in there. But you know, a lot a lot of it is just, uh, you know, following what the chords are doing and just coming up with new ideas. Um, you know, I have particular ways that I like to play guitar as well. Um, you know, I love stab chords, which you heard um at the end there so you know there's loads of things going on on in the song that add you know subtle little details and new and new things in there but the basis of the song um is for the most part pretty simple there's you know simple chords in there simple harmony in there and everything like that you know a drum pattern in there that's pretty much following um the rhythm that the you know original guitar riff was doing that I came up with and yeah that's pretty much um you know how the song ended up developing from there so I really hope that's been helpful for you and it's given you some ideas of how you can approach you know layering up and building on a song literally just from one small idea and that's you know very often really all it takes um you know that that's where a lot of songs start is just like one simple small idea and it just builds from there and you know i think the fact that it's so much easier nowadays to get software like this like you know logic x that i have here or any other daw software and the fact that it's so easy to record you know at home in your bedroom or, or wherever and the fact that you can pretty much just you know record whatever it is you come up with pretty much straight away and you know build a song from there it's, it's honestly one of my favorite ways to write and it's a really useful way to write because you know inspiration for for songs you know happens like in a in a moment very often so yeah i really hope that has helped you today i really hope that you have enjoyed this video and if you liked it um, then please do give it a like and let me know in the comments below um, any questions that you have I will respond to every single one and also don't forget to go and grab the ebook that I mentioned as well which is down below in the comments I'm sure that will help you massively off the back of this video to go and write your next song even if you are um, a complete beginner it will show you the seven steps seven step process that you need to follow in order to write um, a great song that you can be really proud of and at the at the end of the day that's what it's all about thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you on the next one cheers